Okay, everybody, thanks for coming to our session with Rob O'Lynn on building a lesson-centric course. Rob is an associate professor of preaching and ministry and director of graduate Bible programs at Kentucky Christian University, as well as an instructor in Johnson University's online program and Fuller Theological Seminary. He has been involved in online learning since 2005. His writing on pedagogical uses of technology and media in education has appeared in a number of online and print resources. So we're really glad to hear from Rob O'Lynn this morning. Thank you, Terry, and uh, good morning. Welcome to everyone that's here. I'm glad you um, have come to join us today talking about building lesson-centric courses. And uh, as Terry mentioned, I've been involved in online learning since 2005. Uh, I began actually as a graduate student in seminary. Um, I was at a place where I had finished one graduate degree and was needing to get a second one. And my options back in 2005 were either move somewhere else or try to find another outlet. And uh, I bumped into a friend of mine who said, hey, I should consider a hybrid program at Lubbock Christian University for their graduate program. And I uh, signed up in my first course. One was a completely online class and that was totally new to me. Um, although I was very intrigued by the idea and one was on campus and so I drove to Lubbock for a one-week course and, and did all of that and uh, the, the online course was a course in conflict management and I just instantly fell in love with online learning and saw then the idea of the, the future of education using technology um, to advance education the students from all over the country or all over the planet could come together um, in a course and study together and learn together um, and it was just a, a whole new world, a brave new world that opened up before my eyes in those years. Um, I started teaching online in 2010 using technology, in fact, using Sakai in 2010 uh, when I started teaching at Kentucky Christian University on a part-time basis and uh, have loved learning how to use Sakai and all of its features. And so I really appreciate all of you all being here today. What I wanna do is this is gonna be kind of a demonstration more so than a, a presentation or a lecture on, on, on using lessons tool. So give me just a second here to prepare my screen. All right, and what you guys should see in front of you is a sandbox that my um, instructional designer here at KCU um, provided for me. So what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through um, how I set up a class through the lessons tool. And then I'll show you a couple of different options that providing we have time, um, provide a couple of different options. One, an in-seat course using Sakai, uh, the lessons tool, and one, an online class using the lessons tool in Sakai. And uh, if Terry, if you will let me know when we have about five minutes left, uh, just in case I get a little long-winded, I am a preacher after all, uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, and also, we do want to invite, if you have questions as I go along, please ask those in the chat room. Uh, and Terry will let me know um, if you have questions so that way we can address them as we come along. So in thinking about the lessons tool, a couple of things to begin with is, is what exactly is the lessons tool? Um, the lessons tool, I think, is like a digital syllabus or lesson plan for our class. Um, it's the landing spot for our students. It's where they find everything. Um, it's where they, they go for the week and figure out what they need to do to accomplish our learning goals or learning objectives or assignments for the week. And I think there's two benefits to using the lessons tool, more so than using other forms of um, other tools that we have in Sakai. One is the most important one is it is a one-stop shop for the weekly agenda and relevant materials. This is where we can get the material that we that they need for the week. We can put a lot of stuff in the lessons tool. Um, you know, if you use the the forms, they're limited if you to to certain aspects. Um, but the, the lessons tool, we could have a whole host of things. And also we can format it well, we can make it very look very clean, very simple, very engaging, um, without you having to do a lot of coding, which is what I personally like, because I, even, though I, even though I know HTML code, I don't particularly like using HTML code to write course pages. Um, also, the other benefit of the lessons tool is that we can design the page in such a way that so that students can navigate back and forth throughout the course using the lessons tool. And so we can bring a bunch of different aspects of the course into the lessons tool and, um, and can help students navigate very easily. So let's go ahead and talk about this. So you've got your class in, in Sakai and you need to start adding some things. And if you notice, I've already added forms, assignments, and gradebook just to kind of speed up the process a little bit. But to add the lessons tool, you go to site info, manage tools, 
and then scroll down here to lessons. Okay. And then to continue. Now I always, because I like consistency throughout all of my courses, not just for the, the one class that I'm teaching, but if you notice here, if I'm teaching a lot of classes this semester, both undergraduate and graduate courses, I like consistency in the tabs across my courses. So that way students that have me in this Old Testament class and this preaching class will expect the same kind of setup. So I always use course content. So that way students know what to look for. And then if you want to order, which I, which I always encourage there to be a, a good order. And the way I do my tabs is kind of from top to bottom in terms of, in terms of necessity for on a weekly basis. So normally I'd have a syllabus tab in here, but I haven't included it, but um, I can do that just so you can see the syllabus tab. Let's go ahead and add that syllabus tab. Again, put that up here at the top. So the students have the, the, the basic course design, I think, fits this model of the overview, the syllabus, announcements, the course content, forums, assignments, and gradebook. You can add other things such as resources or statistics as you wish or as you choose or as your individual university or college dictates. But these are the basic tools that we need in order to make learning the lesson tools learning centric. All right, so with that in mind, let's go back to lessons, the course content. And what I typically do is I design courses by units. So as I'm thinking about my units, unit one, introduction, and I typically like to date my units. So that way students know what to, how long that they're going to be working out of this, out of this particular unit. All right. So if you go back to course content, you'll see the unit as a button. I think this pops and catches the eye better than a link does. Obviously we can add a second unit just kind of to compare. So you can see the buttons we have here, the, the, the buttons for the individual units. So we go into the individual unit. And what you can also do, obviously, is you can, in the, in the unit, you can break down into pages or into weeks, doing the same process. And again, I like to date my weeks. Again, so students can keep tabs on what they're, what they're doing. Again, we have the week. Now let's talk about setting up the week. The best way to set up the content is, I think, individual um, text boxes for each unit of your course, for each segment of the class. And what I'd recommend starting off with is a weekly synopsis. We're gonna load these as we go. This is especially helpful if you're doing um, online classes. Let me show you how we're, obviously how we're doing this is as we're adding the different parts, we go to add content and then add text. Then we can just clearly type in what we, what we want to add into the course and how we want to 
um, how we want to highlight each area. So again, add content, add text. And one more for an assignment. Now, obviously, we won't be using all of these elements in each individual week unless it's a shorter course. I said I'll show you some, a couple of different options that I have in just a few moments as we get near the end. But for the most part, this is a basic, um, a basic framework for a, a week of an online learning course. A weekly synopsis, weekly learning objectives, um, reading, lecture material, discussion board, and assignments. And these, um, these two areas right here, those are, I would recommend, you know, how you feel about them. Some courses require them in online learning. Some courses, some schools do not. Um, I think especially in, on, in online learning, they are very important to have weekly synopses, weekly learning objectives. Um, also, what I typically do as well is, um, because I like the, the page to stay as clean as possible, is I will email out my students their weekly, their weekly synopsis um, on, on Sunday afternoon. Give them the weekly synopsis and agenda so they know what to expect during the week. So let's go ahead and start thinking about filling in these, these elements of the course. In order to edit text boxes that are already set up, go over here to this uh, highlighted column, this edit feature right here. So weekly synopsis can be something as simple as this week. And if you notice the way that I designed it, the way that I designed the synopsis this week, we'll discuss a topic. I'm using preaching Paul's letters because my field is preaching. Um, and it's saying attention will be given to uh, a, a specific matter inside that larger topic. So theology and writing and the rhetoric of these writings. And then also an application point, um, how the, this learning will apply to them, to the student immediately. In this case, how contemporary preachers can articulate the meaning behind these ancient texts for today's listener. So we have here kind of a, a kind of a scaling down in these three in these two short statements. One, a larger topic for the week, a more specific focus inside that topic, and then a practical application. Um, all of this will help us with our learning goals. So let's talk about weekly learning objectives. And weekly learning objectives can be uh, can be very general. I prefer them to be very specific because it helps the students know what they're getting out of the class. And of course, in your syllabus, you should have learning objectives in your syllabus. Uh, so these are going to be more refined for the individual week. So um, I use Webb's depth of knowledge. Let's go with this one, develop, construct, developing, understanding of the theology and rhetoric of Paul's letters. Identify.
Rob, as you're typing, yeah, Tiffany sure. Stull is asking about a place to insert a checklist. Okay. Um, to, so students can check off activities as they sure. learn. Um, I'll tell you what, Terry, I know that you're much better at that than I am. Mm -hmm. So why don't, once I, um, once I build this box, could you show them, could you demonstrate that for us? Okay. All right. Or, or maybe, how about this? Why don't you let me get my page set up so that way they can see what the, how to build the checklist and I'll turn it over to you for a few moments. Let's do that. Okay. And then um, prepare a sermon. Okay. So now that we have the work learning objectives, this gives us a roadmap for the rest of the week. And uh, just because we're getting a little bit tight on time, um, let me show you how to do the lecture material, how I particularly like to do lecture material. I find that I find that being um, that being courteous to our students, courteous to students in an online environment works the best. So I actually ask them to please watch a lecture video, and then in order to add the lecture video, what I do is this: go to content links, and then the video. We'll just go to video. We'll just title it, and then I've picked one out, a random one. On the screen, there it is. And then you just highlight, just put the te put the URL code in the text box, and you have yourself a video. Now you have to reorder it. Um, Sakai is not a hundred percent as intuitive as we might as we might like it to be. Although it's an excellent tool, we do have to rearrange just a few things. Um, and so now they have a, access to a video, to a discussion board. Um, I'm just going to kind of do this really quickly. Please complete, please answer the following questions. And again, I love the fact that you do not have to do HTML coding. We have this, these wonderful text boxes that we can use for building the material. Now here's the cool thing that I like about using lessons pages, using lessons page. Now, if you notice, we have a forums tool um, over here on this side. And in, when I was going to school in online learning in 2005, that's what I'd have to do. I'd have to go out of the lessons box into the forms tool, click there, you know, click there, see my form and that kind of thing. But in, in this, in the lessons tool, Sakai offers is a beautiful option. And that is this, go to add content, go to link to a form or topic. You can click the one you want. You select the item and there it goes. Now again, we have to reorder and add it in the right place. But what this will do is this. When the student has watched the video and is ready to do the forum post, they can click there and takes them right to the right to the forum post. They can answer it right there in the text box. And when they're done, they just click back and right back to the lessons page. And I think that that is, that is such a time saver for students and also for us as well, that it's one of the more beautiful aspects of the lessons tool. And then lastly, just because we've got one is that if you have them in an assignment, um, you can kind of do the same, you can do the, exactly the same thing. Go to link to an assignment. There's the assignment already highlighted. And again, it goes right inside, ready to go to students immediately. They can click the, they can click the assignment, takes them straight to the assignment. They do the assignment as they're requested to, they can submit it and then they can write back to the page to make sure that they are, that they are done. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, Actually, Terry, actually, can you walk me through how to add a tool, how to add a checklist, and I'll just do it here. Okay. If uh, uh, go to, go up to your add content. Okay. And scroll down till you see add checklist. checklist. There we go. Okay. okay. Now that you put in a checklist title. Okay. Week one checklist. Okay. And then you don't have to add a checklist description, but if you want to put a note to students like. Um, this week, note that the quiz is due on Friday instead of Saturday or something like that. That's fine. You don't have to. Um, and then you start adding the checklist items there. Okay. All right. Cool. So and watch or read assigned reading, which we didn't get to. Yeah. Now, if you were to go back into your page and make those required items that are linked, like the forums, the assignment, that kind of thing, 
If you make them required, then you have an option here um, on the checklist items to link to those particular required items. And as the student completes them, then it automatically checks off. Okay. Now that's what I'm going to add. So then we can make sure that it's saved. We can save it and it should come up at the bottom of the page. Right. Like that. Yeah. And then usually I'll make it into a separate column yeah. on, you know, but that's, that's basically what it is. And, you know, there's another level, like I said, where you can make it automatically check off those things. And, uh, and like Tiffany's pointing out, you can also, um, you can monitor where the students are in their lessons when you go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, if in case you're curious with reading, one thing that I like to do with reading is just here for a second, is I like to add the, the cover. This is something I expect from Terry several years ago. I don't know, Terry, if you remember this, but I, the, I like to add the, the a picture of the book itself. So that way students can know, especially if you've got a class where you've got a lot of pictures. This might take a little bit longer than I hoped that it would. Yeah. But you can go you can go through your browser and you can upload pictures of covers of books. Yeah, it's gonna take a little longer than I was expecting it to. Um, you can add it, the picture goes straight in here and you can mess around with the width and height. And then that way the picture, oops, cancel. That way the picture of the, the cover of the textbook will pop up here on the screen. And so if you've got a week where you've got multiple readings with multiple textbooks, or maybe in some of my classes, they have the same title. And so I will say the, the white book or the blue book or the gray book or the whatever. And that way it helps the students identify which book that they need to use for the week. Okay, Rob, uh, go, yeah. out, go outside of this box. Laura Sierra wants to point out that to the far right of mm -hmm. your uh, bar, you, you can add content anywhere on the page so you don't have to reorder stuff. So, oh, okay. So it, it inserts it immediately above wherever you hit that ah. plus mark. Oh, okay. The, uh, you can also use a field generator, um, the, the bracket, bracket, first name, close bracket, close bracket, to personalize your content. So it can say, Rob, this week you're going to learn about such and such. Oh, okay. I and which is, which is really a nice little thing when you want a casual kind of, you know, relatable kind of a thing going on. Cool. That's, that's very, that's very cool. I like the, I like that more personalized feature. That's, that's uh, very interesting. I, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a nice little yeah. kind of, you know, slip it in there kind of tip. Cool. Um, as we're finishing up, let me kind of just show you a couple of classes that I, as I said, that I had built, built to kind of give you an idea what they look like. I'm going to first of all do a course that is online. Um, this is my graduate, let me pick my graduate conflict management class. And if you notice, um, the way that I've designed this is from the overview, if you look down the, the, the bar, a few more I, a few more tools than we have included in the sandbox, but that's just because um, I needed a couple more tools and, you're, and you can always add more tools as you need. But the uh, logistics, the course description, and the course objectives, letting the students know what to expect out of the course. Moving down to the syllabus. I really like how we can add our syllabus um, in detail like this in Sakai. And then obviously the course content. And here you see how I was mentioning early on about the idea of, of units and then into weeks. And again, if you notice the, the way I do things is I try to streamline it as much as possible. Um, and so the, the units, the, the, the weeks inside the unit will, will match up generally with the unit title. They're, they are dated. And again, you see the reading, the lecture material, um, the discussion board, which can take them straight to the discussion board, and then the assignments. Um, and how that it's, the, what I like about, what I like about using the, the lessons tool, as I've mentioned here, it's clear on the page. It is, is, it is uh, very effortless in terms of students, in terms of where to find things, and everything they need is right here inside the lessons page. Um, of course, forums. Five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Um, you can see all the forms that they have um, and all the tools. Uh, let me show you one week where I used a where I used the test and quizzes tool. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. 
So I had also used a vocabulary quiz that was inserted into Sakai. And then in terms of a NC course, this is a, uh, a Pentateuch course that I'm teaching this semester, same kind of material. Uh, and if you'll notice that I designed them to look exactly the same, units, weeks, and then I have included my lecture content um, for not only for my access, but also for student access, because obviously with, the, uh, with many of us being on campus, but also online, um, I wanted to make sure that students had the, all of the right, all of the same material that I was presenting in class uh, for them. Rob, did you know that you can enable subpage navigation so that students can open the course content and go directly to their units um, without having to keep going through the course content, the uh, unit such and the week such? You can mm -hmm. en enable that so that they can choose to navigate okay. through. How would we do that? How would we do that, Terry? So uh, go to site info. Site info. And you want to go to manage tools. Manage tools. And then on the lower right of the page, uh, enable sub lesson sub ah. navigation. Okay. So click on that. And then, and then obviously you want to click continue. Yeah. The way it saves it. Yeah, uh, and you want to finish it as well. Okay. Now that changes. See the course content. Ah, is that a new feature? Um, it's been there for two years. Two years, okay, all right. All right, and that can take you to course content. So it can take you to the unit. Yeah, it doesn't take you to the subunits. Sub you know. But at least it cuts down a step, which of course, as we all know, is great benefit to be able to cut down as many steps as possible in order to help our students get to the content. The subpage unit uh, affects accessibility. Um, only in that if a keyboard user would just have to click further through that. Yeah. So that so that is a consideration, although, you know, the benefit uh, cost kind of thing kind of uh, it depends on it simplifies navigation in another way because they're going to have to click through those units anyway. Um, so I think that it's a really nice feature. Um, I, I do want to mention I just finished the session on making your lesson pages accessible. And if you want to go back and refer to that recording uh, and add that extra element to your page design, that's, that will be available for you. All right, I'm reading through the, uh, the comments here. Thank you all for adding your comments, um, especially about the personalization tool and also about the accessibility. Um, as online, as the online, aspect of education becomes more and more useful and more and more necessary. Obviously, the idea of accessibility and how do we manage, how to make pages navigable for our students is going to be very, very important. Um, yeah, so and I appreciate, Terry, you adding what you mentioned. Yeah, and th that session has already been recorded. Good, good. Well, um, that's really about all that I have, uh, unless there's anything specific. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming to our session today about how to build lesson-centered courses. Hope that this has been helpful to you and appreciate what you're doing at your schools and colleges working with your students. And just to mention, Tiffany Stahl also did a session on accessibility this morning and you can refer to her recording as well. Okay. With, yeah. Great, thank you very much for that, for that Tiffany. And thank you, uh, Terry, for helping me uh, moderate this session today. Okay. Well, with anything else, I send you blessings and hope that you're able to enjoy the rest of the conference and maybe I'll see you in one of the sessions later this afternoon. I saw up to about 52 participants in, oh, cool. in the room. So. Wow, that was, that was really good. Yeah. Talk to you later. All right, thanks Terry, I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Uh -huh,